Hi, so a common thing which usually happens when you bring your animal to the vet is that sometimes your vet may ask you for a blood test. So today we're going to discuss why, when and how do we do those blood tests. So today let's talk about why. Okay, so why do we do a blood test? When do we do a blood test? Why should they do a blood test? So sometimes when you bring your pet in and the diagnosis is not obtained through clinical examination or asking a history of yourself, um, they still can't find out exactly what's wrong. Then sometimes a blood test can tell us what's happening internally because a what we do the clinical examination is only what we can see externally. Sometimes it can tell us a problem, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we also do it to rule out uh, certain conditions like anemia. To rule it out, you need a blood test. Sometimes you can just see it visually, but it's not as accurate. Sometimes we want to differentiate conditions with similar signs. So like for example, if a cat is drinking more than usual, there can be a lot of different reasons why your cat is doing so. Uh, from, ranging from diabetes to uh, cystitis and all the different reasons. So it's to rule out different conditions with similar signs. Sometimes it's pure, purely just to find out more. Example, ovulation times. For example, if you have got a breeding bitch that you want to a, a breed from and you want to know when to uh, bring her to the start dog, then that is where uh, you may want to do a blood test to check what's the progesterone level uh, to see when and whether that is the optimum time for mating. How do we do it? Usually, we can uh, take blood from a few different uh, sort of areas uh, in a dog or a cat. Uh, usually, a jugular vein, where it's along the neck, or the cephalic vein, where it's along the front leg. Those are the common sites. There are arguments to see which one is better. Jugular vein is definitely bigger. So the reality is that you can probably get more blood in a shorter period of time, much faster. And also, the needle you use can be much wider bore which means that there is less trauma to the blood cells as it go through a wider bowl compared to a more narrow bowl. Um, the challenges lies in uh, sometimes the animals may not like to be restrained that uh, well, and hence they may offer you the leg, but they wouldn't want the neck to be done. But that's just from animal to animal. Um, occasionally, what happens with the leg is that, uh, yes, it is there, but certainly the veins are much smaller, so you certainly need more patience, it takes more time, so longer, which may come to be a disadvantage when you're trying to take the blood. Don't forget that we do need to clip the hair. <laughs> so some owners, they say they can't take a blood test and they don't expect the hair to be clipped. Unlike humans, animals, they can be quite hairy. So without clipping the hair, sometimes it can be quite difficult to visualize the veins uh, and we need to get the needle into the vein. So we do have to clip the hair. So don't be too surprised when your vet has to clip your pet's hair to take some blood. So the bloods are usually kept in some special tubes depending on what is needed. So example, there is this pink color or red color tube that's called an EDTA tube. And basically this stops clotting from happening to keep the uh, the blood as preserved as possible to be sent off for hematology. Then we have got a plain tube whereby we keep the blood over there and this is where uh, the top bit of the blood is spun of the serum it is called to uh, take it off for um, biochemistry so we can learn different tubes. It is a fairly skilled job you know in humans uh, they are called phlebotomists whereby they are trained to take bloods from you or I or any other patient that they have. In animals, you know, it's much uh, trickier because you can't really explain to them what you're doing apart from restraining them and obtaining a blood sample from them which they may actually resent. Can you try to uh, explain to an angry cat that you're trying to take blood from the neck or from the leg or from a dog that doesn't know what's happening, a nervous dog, you know, it's just uh, trying to be free and uh, not keep still. So it is a very, very skilled job. There are plenty and many, many types of blood tests. So you have to specify with your vet. Your vet may tell you they're doing a certain blood test. And don't think that the blood test, number one, the test that he's doing is going to cover everything under the sun because it does not. And secondly, not all things can be tested for bloods. Oh, uh, sorry, with a blood test. So not all things can be tested with a blood test. So you do have to sort of um, find out exactly what you're doing the blood test for. And uh, it is good practice for a vet to be running a blood test speci for specific reasons, rather than just using a shotgun approach to just run bloods over uh, any cases. So your vet should be able to advise you with that. Mm -hmm.